What's up everyone, how's it going? Welcome back Ruminaten. In this video, I want to show you a new browser that's designed to be AI native. So just recently, I got an early access to Dia, a new AI native browser that has AI features integrated right in the browser. Using Dia, you can browse the web with an AI assistant that knows the information in all of your tabs and browsing history. You can ask it to assist you in writing email, debugging code, or simply ask questions that are relevant to the current content of the browser. You can also add skills, which are basically custom prompts that you can save and load whenever you want. So in this video, I will show you how to get started with Dia, showing you the best features that will be most useful and boost your productivity. Now before we get into the exciting part, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button down below, and please help me reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year, as it will mean a lot to me, making me feel more excited to create useful videos just like this one. Now, before we get started, note that Dia is currently in beta, and you can only use it in Mac OS with Apple chips. And if you do want to try it out, you have to sign up for the waitlist, and once you received an email saying that you're in, you can go ahead and download the browser, and then sign up with the email address you have registered with Dia. Okay, so here's the main interface of Dia. It has a chat box that you can use to navigate to a website, chat with AI, or search the web with search engine like Google. Now the first thing I want to show you is that Dia browser has vertical tabs feature. So by default, if you open a new tab, that tab will go horizontally here just like other browsers. If you want to, you can make the tabs go vertical by opening view and then show tabs in sidebar, and now the tabs will be shown in a vertical sidebar as follows. Next, you can also change the theme of the browser by going to view and then appearance. You can choose the dark theme over here, which I like better over the light theme. Alright, now let's try out Dia. You can use it like a regular browser or as an AI assistant depending on what you put in the chat box. For example, if I just type Google here, uh, you need to look at the icons to know what Dia offers. The magnifying glass icon means it will search the web, while the chat bubble icon here is for chatting with the AI. And then this web icon means it will navigate to the website. So let's click on this chat bubble for now, and we can see that Dia sends a response using the integrated AI system. Here's a quick summary of Google, and then we can also adjust the response by clicking on this retry icon. Now, we can retry with reasoning over here. The current chat response is generated by GPT 4.1, so uh, Dia is actually in partnership with OpenAI to power its AI capabilities. So if we select reasoning, I think it will use the O3 model. Uh, let's just try it out. Okay, so here's the response. It asks me to be more specific about what I'm looking for. Now if we click the retry button again, we can see that ChatGPT 3 is used for this response. So yeah, that's how it works. If we select web search, then we will revert to GPT 4.1 model. And that's about it for the chat. Next, I will show you how to use Dia as a writing assistant. First, I will open Google Docs. Now, keep in mind that when you type something into the chat box, you need to select the action to take here. Usually, I mistakenly enter the chat mode when I want to actually do a regular web search. So, click on normal search here, and now we can see the link to Google Docs, so let's select that, and then sign in, and let's open a document that I already have here. It's an essay analyzing the tariff trade war enacted by the United States government earlier this year. So whenever you want to chat with the AI, you can click on this chat button on the top right corner, or you can use the command plus E shortcut. A chat will open as a sidebar on the right, and the content of the tab will be attached as shown here. You can also attach a specific part of the content by selecting and copying it. For example, I will select the entire executive summary part here, and then press command C to copy the text. And you can see that the selected text is automatically attached over here. I will remove the document from this attachment window, and then ask Dia to make the summary sound more confident. Press enter and let Dia process the request. And here's the proposed new paragraph generated by Dia. We can automatically replace the current paragraph by clicking on this replace button. And now we can see that the executive summary on the Google Docs is automatically replaced. So that's how you can use Dia as a writing assistant. 
And next, let me show you how to use DIA to assist in coding. So DIA can suggest coding tips and provide assistance just like ChatGPT in general. For example, I will ask DIA to create a Minesweeper game in neon style color and cool animations, and then press enter here. And now you can see that it will write the code for the game, but it can actually modify your file system to create the files and write the code for you. As an AI browser, DIA is not agentic, so it cannot access or change local files. Honestly, I don't think it will ever be able to, because opening a computer file system to a browser could introduce a significant security risk. So here's the result from DIA, you need to create a React application in order to test this app. Uh, I'm not going to do that for now. Instead, let's take a look at another convenient feature from DIA, which is to summarize and compare information from multiple tabs. So here, I will first open the Hugging Face website, and then select an AI model for example. Let's select the Quantry model here, and then here's the main homepage of the Quantry 235B model. Here, I will open a chat window, and I will just ask DIA about the system requirements to run this model. Let it process the request for a while, and then after that, DIA will give a detailed description on the system requirements for the model. Since it's a large model, I will need 4 or more GPU servers, such as the 80GB A100 NVIDIA chips. So yeah, you can ask any questions within a single tab like this. Now, if you want to interact with many tabs at once, you can also do that in DIA. So let's open a new tab to select another Quant3 model. For example, I will select the small 4B model here. And now I will open the chat sidebar again. To add context to the chat box, you can type the add symbol. And then you can add more context to this conversation, such as all open tabs or open tabs of just one website or the entire history from the browser or just one specific tab. So I will add the 235B model page here and then ask DIA to summarize the comparison between the two models. And here we can see DIA provide a summary of the differences between the two models. The 235B model is much larger and more powerful, while the 4B model is smaller and can be run on less powerful devices. So yeah, that's how you can chat with multiple tabs in DIA. Next, DIA also has a newly released feature called Skills, which basically allows you to save custom prompts under a specific shortcut. First, let's click on this Browse Skills button, and here we can see many skills being showcased by DIA, so let's just select one. I will choose this Will I Regret Buying This skill. And here's the skill detail. There is the shortcut that will trigger the workflow or custom prompt. And then here's the actual prompt. Basically, this skill will take the information from the active page and then help you decide whether you will regret buying the product or not. It will analyze the product style, price, material, and so on to make a logical decision. It will also write in a friendly human tone, just like a best friend talking to you. So let's try out this skill. Uh, we need to click on this Try and Dia button. And then we can see a pop-up window here, so just click Add Skill. And now the skill is added to DIA, so to use it, let's close this window and then open a new tab. This time, I will head to apple.com. And here's the iPhone 16, the latest phone from Apple. I will just click Learn More here. And now in this page, I want to run DIA skill, so let's open the chat sidebar again. And then type slash so that DIA will show all available skills. We can also add a new skill from here, but let's just click on the Will I Regret skill and then click the Submit button. And here's the answer from DIA. Based on the available information, I'm 20% likely to regret buying an iPhone 16. And here are some factors why I won't regret that decision. For example, it has premium price, but fair enough for the tech, the build quality, and the brand. And then it has good material, and here, note that DIA also knows that I have a Samsung Galaxy A52s, and buying an iPhone 16 will be an upgrade, so that's a very nice touch to DIA AI. It really pulls in all available information about me for this decision. There is also other considerations and honest friend-to-friend -friend advice. Here, there is a notice saying memory improves answers in chat, which I think it did, so it's a pretty cool feature. Anyway, you can also add a new skill manually. When you open a new tab in DIA, you can see this skills tab at the top right corner. 
If you click on that, you can see all saved skills, as well as add a new skill here. You can select the model to use for the skill, as well as the shortcut and the full prompt over here. So yeah, that will be all for the skills feature in Dia. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. But overall, that's how the native AI browser DIA works. It's definitely nice to see these AI features baked into a browser, particularly the ability to chat with multiple tabs and browser history. As a builder, sometimes I have to go through many repositories and documentations to gather information, and when using ChatGPT in Chrome, I have to copy the context from open tabs to ChatGPT in order to do some tasks. With DIA's multi-tabs chat, I won't have to do that again. The UI and animations in this browser is also really nice. It's very minimalist and snappy, and while integrating AI into a browser might seem trivial, I think it will indeed increase your productivity as the more you use it, the more the AI will know you, and therefore the response will get better. By the way, Google is also planning to integrate Gemini into Chrome, and the AI search engine Perplexity is also rolling its own AI native browser called Comet, so I do think that AI integrated into browsers will be the future from now. And now we have come to the end of this tutorial. So, what do you think about Dia? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Code with Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye!